Hello, my name is Hemant Surale, and I will be presenting experimental analysis of bare hand media remote switching techniques in virtual reality. So, what does this term mode switching actually mean, right? Let's dissect that and focus on mode. So, in order to understand mode, uh, let's play a game. And in the next slide, what's going to happen is you will see a pinch hand posture moving along horizontal axis and you need to guess what this posture would do inside a virtual reality application. So you ready? What do you think this, this action uh, created in virtual reality? Well, it drew a line. I'll give you another chance, this time with a cube. Try to guess what this hand had motion created in virtual reality, or what, what it did. Well, it translated the cube. Now, the last option, you know, yeah, like, you, you won't get more chances beyond this. It should be the easier one. What do you think this hand motion did now? It rotated the cube, okay? So, the interface mode determines what user input is mapped to an application action. And mode switching is simply a transition from one mode to the other. And in our work, this state information is not just with the application, but hand posture itself will maintain the state. So for drawing, you can use pinch hand posture. For translation, you can use fist hand posture. And for rotation, some other hand posture. In past, uh, more switching investigations have primarily focused on uh, mouse, pen input, and touch. But given wide range of uh, input techniques for uh, mid-air input, where is the more switching investigation for that? So this is exactly what we do through our work. And as a first step, we start with literature survey. So all the past work who, uh, which uh, talks about bare hand mid-air input. We sort that work and filter that through these three uh, filtering criteria. The first one is independent. So a hand posture has to be independent. What does that mean is it should be fast to recognize and independent. There shouldn't be a temporal component associated with it. For example, drawing a circle in mid-air wouldn't be a good hand posture for more switching analysis that we do. The second one is kinesthetic action. So users should be able to maintain the hand posture throughout completing the task. And the last one is unconstrained. While participant or the user is maintaining this kinesthetic hand posture, he should be able to do that around his body while being in VR. Applying these three filtering criteria on this past work, what we come up with is this six hand postures. So pinching fingers, extending fingers, closing hand, open hand, raise hand, and touching the body. And the experimental task is line drawing. In a baseline posture, or the baseline condition, you put your hand inside uh, one of the spheres, start drawing line, and you connect that to the second sphere, and get your hand out. And this is how the baseline uh, task looks like, where you use pinch hand posture to draw the line. Let's l take a look at compound task. In compound task, only difference is you will be drawing red lines by using one of the more switching technique. Here, it is fist. And in order to calculate the more switching time taken for, for example, let's say fist, what we use is a subtraction method. So in the, uh, in the baseline block, you'll be drawing all lines using pinch hand posture, and in compound uh, task or compound block, what you'll be doing is drawing red lines, alternating red lines using one of the more switching technique. So the top one is baseline, uh, baseline block, and the, uh, the bottom one is compound block, where you are switching modes using one of the more switching technique. Now, the more switching time taken for that compound task or the uh, more switching technique, say fist, is simply the difference between the time taken for block B uh, uh, and 
the average amount of time a participant took to, to complete the block A and C combined. So we conducted a first study with eight such techniques. This was within group study, and we measure task completion time, error rate, and subjective ratings. The first technique is non-dominant fist technique. Here, as you can see, a non-dominant hand fist will act as a mode switch. In dominant hand fist technique, a dominant hand will form a fist to switch the mode. In non-dominant palm technique, orientation of palm will switch the mode. In dominant palm technique, dominant palm posture will switch the mode. In dominant point technique, pointing posture will switch the mode. In non-dominant device technique, carefully take a look at how user is holding the controller in his left hand to switch the mode. In non-dominant head technique, a force sensitive register was uh, taped onto the side of the head mounted display and user has to pr press that in order to switch the mode. And we use force sensitive register for these two purposes. Uh, Beyond non-dominant head technique, we also use uh, force sensitive register for precisely detecting when the line drawing task started. And the last technique, non-dominant field of view. This technique, as you might have guessed already, by just bringing the non-dominant hand in field of view would switch the mode. Now, these are the eight techniques. Let's take a look at their mode switching time footprint. As you can see here, Dominant hand techniques performed poorly compared to non-dominant hand technique. Non-dominant uh, non hand techniques, particularly non-dominant device technique, is the fastest. Let's take a look at the error rates now. In terms of overall error rate, non-dominant techniques are pretty comparable to baseline uh, hand posture, which is pinch. And dominant hand techniques perform poorly. And one of the reasons for this is participants felt that, and, and these techniques are point, fist, and palm, they are significantly different from uh, baseline posture, which is pinch. So we suspect that maybe adding subtle hand posture would reveal some di uh, different results. And to summarize uh, results of the study one, non-dominant hand techniques were less air prone and faster. Dominant hand techniques, fist, palm, and point were perceived to be confusing. And this set us the pace uh, or the base, uh, base for the study two. And uh, through study two, we particularly want to answer, can dominant hand actions uh, more similar to pinch trigger would perform better? And what is the effect of using a device controller as a manipulation trigger? So in baseline task, you saw that pinch hand posture was used to draw the line. Can we use controller and see what is the comparison between those two techniques? So we conducted a second study with four techniques. We'll get to those four techniques real soon. This was also similar to the study one. We measured uh, task completion time, error rate, and subjective ratings. So first subtle form of dominant hand technique is dominant orientation. So by just changing the orientation of dominant hand, a mode is switched. In the dominant uh, hand middle technique, all you do is just use your middle finger to switch the mode. So in the baseline, ta uh, baseline task, you use index finger, and in, uh, to switch the mode, you would use middle finger. Non-dominant hand uh, device technique is similar to what we saw in experiment one, except that in order to draw the lines, now user is holding the controller in his dominant hand, and the trigger use, is used to draw the line. And the last technique is non-dominant palm technique, where Non-dominant palm orientation is changed, and another change to this technique is user is holding the controller to draw the lines. And th these are the exciting results. So as we suspected that maybe a subtle form of dominant hand techniques will result in better, better uh, more switching times, and that's what we see here now, that dominant hand middle technique is comparable to the fastest technique, uh, non-dominant hand device that we saw earlier. 
Let's take a look at the error rate. So one of the win of this second study is that controller baseline is comparable to the pinch baseline. And that's one of the strongest highlight of this study is a pinch is a practical alternative to a controller button. The second one is non-dominant actions for accuracy focused tasks are more suitable. And dominant hand actions are suitable for longer tasks. Like imagine if you free your left hand from uh, doing the mode switching, it can be used for some other purposes and dominant hand can continue to switch the mode as we saw in second study. Next one is avoid the pointing posture for frequent more switching. This is quite surprising given that pointing posture is such a common posture a uh, lot of applications use. Subtle dominant hand techniques are promising alternative to non-dominant controller techniques. And switching between very different hand posture, specifically dominant hand posture, may be confusing. To summarize, we provide empirically driven insights to use bare hand mid-air input in virtual reality applications. Thank you. I'm ready to take the questions. So again, if you stick a hand up and a SV will come over with a microphone, uh, or if you want to write it down, I can read it out alternatively. Okay, so Hemant, thank you for your work, actually. Uh, while people are doing that, uh, I, want, I was curious about the, uh, you, you had four sensitive trigger and stuff, and uh, we, we were talking before, and I said, e even going back, you know, 10 years or so to the uh, Nintendo Wii, uh, people have a tendency, in my own experience anyway, to sort of fake technology in, in a way that they simulate it actually, you know, pretending to be doing the actual thing, but actually they're not actually doing the right posture. Uh, did you see that in your work, or, or how did that or how would you detect that sort of uh, behavior? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's actually a pretty interesting question. So it is possible that you can overlap, you know, trigger and forming a posture, but specifically for our study, in order to control the uh, overall, you know, sub-movement for every more switching technique, we follow a sequential model. What does that mean is you form a posture and then in order to start drawing the line, you use force sensitive register to trigger it. Mm -hmm. And this way it is kind of like a maintain, like the same sequence of action is maintained throughout all the mode switching techniques. Mm -hmm. So the results are, um, you know, like there's no bias results then. Yeah, thank you. I'm Paul Green from the University of Michigan. How well did your a priori predictions agree with the experimental results? Uh, yeah. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. How well did your a priori predictions agree with your experimental results? Hey, Martin? Uh, actually, yeah. it's really hard, unfortunately. The, I think it's, it's a coin here, so I cannot really hear. Can yeah, if you could uh, talk a bit louder, sorry, the stage speakers actually make it like a... All right. How well did your a priori predictions agree with your exper experimental results? Okay. Yeah. So how, oh. did, how did your predictions compare with your actual results, essentially? Uh, you, uh, do you mean specifically for the second study? Both. For both. Um, yeah, I, I might need more clarification. What, uh, clarification on what is a priori uh, assumption means? So, like predictions before you collected data, for example. So, for uh, study one and study two, both were like the uh, um, mode switching techniques were picked based on the classification or those filtering criteria. So, there was no specific prediction attached before we conducted the study or even to see the results. It was purely driven by curiosity, especially for the second study. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, give Hemant uh, a round of applause.